What's up everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna create an NFT collection and we're gonna create a Web3 application. But with this Web3 application, we're going to incorporate our smart wallet or our ERC4337 wallet. And this is gonna allow a user to create a wallet for that specific application. We'll give them the option to use a MetaMask as their EOA or they can create a local wallet, which will be a wallet that we generate under the hood for them and is stored locally on their device as their EOA wallet. And the great thing with the ERC4337 wallet is we can turn on gasless functions so a user doesn't need to pay gas and we can have a paymaster take care of that instead. And we also don't need to have the user sign certain transactions, giving the user a better experience not having to interact with the wallet as often. But within our application, we'll also give the user the ability to transfer out NFTs from that app to a wallet of their choice. So we're going to be covering a few steps in this video the first thing we're going to do is create our erc 1155 nft collection which people will be able to claim within our application we'll then set up the contracts and necessary things we need to create our smart wallet or our erc 4337 wallet then we'll create our web3 application and we'll incorporate the ability to connect this wallet and the ability to claim these NFTs and transfer them out. Now, before we get started, let's go on the computer here and let's take a quick look at a demo of what we're gonna be building. So right here on my computer, this is our NFT collection. I call this the Elemental Collection and it has a bunch of different elements that a user can claim and collect. You can see here, uh, we have to sign in in order to claim an element. So right here in the top right corner, we can hit sign in. Uh, we do have the option to connect our smart wallet or our ERC4337 wallet here. And you can use your own MetaMask as your EOA wallet, uh, or you can continue as guest, which is gonna set up a local wallet now, if someone didn't have a wallet, they could just create a password, confirm it, and the password would be automatically generated for them. Uh, but I already have one set up on my device here, so I'm just gonna put in the password for it and connect. And just like that, we are signed in. Now, in the top right, we have our profile, which we can either go to our profile or we can sign out, which will disconnect our wallet. So we can sign back in here really quick. We go to our profile here, it will show us it will show us the elements that we currently own and the quantity. And if we want to, we can transfer it out to a wallet address here. So if I just take one of my wallet addresses here and copy it, uh, if I paste, I can transfer this element or any of the elements to that wallet address. So let's just transfer out a water one and it's transferring out right now. Once the transfer is complete we'll get a little notification here and we'll no longer have the water element within our profile now if i come back here i can claim elements as well so again i can claim a fire element and all these transactions and interactions um, are gasless and you don't have to sign for them so if i claim an element here it's going to claim an element uh, the fire element and this is again this transaction is going through behind the scenes and the gas is getting taken care of uh, by the paymaster. So if I come back to my profile here. You can now see we have a fire element. Uh, if we want, we can claim one more just to show it here. So we'll just claim one more fire element and that should increase our quantity to two. Uh, these are ERC 1155 NFTs. So we come back to our profile here and you can see here we have two. So again, this is a way where a user can use your smart wallet uh, and interact within your own application without having to sign transactions, without having to pay gas. But if they want to access NFTs outside of the application, say they want to sell it to their uh, other non-custodial wallet like their MetaMask, they can have the ability to still transfer those NFTs out. So that was a quick demo of what we are going to be building. So without wasting any more time, let's get started and start building this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come on over to uh, thirdweb.com. Uh, let me connect my wallet here and we're going to browse our contracts and we're going to create our NFT drop contract. So I'm going to create this NFT. Uh, sorry, uh, we're going to do an addition drop, which is a ERC 1155. And we're going to select deploy now. We're going to call this uh, Elemental Collection. I'm going to Elemental Collection. 
Uh, we'll give it a symbol of element. And I do have an image that I'm going to use for this here. We'll drag it in there. We'll come down to the bottom. I'm going to deploy this on the Mumbai network, which is Polygon's testnet. We're going to hit deploy now. Confirm this transaction here and we'll sign to add it to our dashboard. All right, we have our contract deployed here. Now we do need to add some NFTs to our contract. So on the left hand navigation, we're gonna go to the NFTs tab and I'm gonna select a single upload and we're gonna do each of the elements here. So we're gonna do a fire element first, put in the artwork. I'm not gonna add any descriptions or properties or traits. I'm just gonna uh, mint it with the name and the image. So we'll lazy mint it here. We'll hit confirm and I'm going to do the same thing with the remaining three elements and we'll be right back. Okay, we have successfully lazy minted all four of our elemental NFTs here. Now, before we finish off with this contract in each one, we do need to set a claim condition. And if you head to the claim conditions tab and we add a phase, we're just going to add a public phase here. But depending on how you want to make your NFTs accessible to the users. You can have only owner where only you can mint it, allow listed a public with some, with allow list, which is you adding some conditions to your public. We're just gonna do a public one here and we're not gonna charge anything for the NFT and we're gonna make it unlimited uh, where you can claim as much as you want and there's no restriction uh, per wallet. So we're just gonna make it public for all of them and we're gonna hit save phase, confirm this here. All right, and once that is done, again, we're gonna do this for all four of the elements and we'll be right back. And once you have set all the claim conditions for all of the NFTs, that does it for our ERC-1155 collection here. And this contract is ready for us to use within our application. Now we do have to do a couple more things to make sure that we can implement our smart wallet or our ERC-4337 wallet. So up here in the tabs, we're gonna come back to home here. Uh, we're gonna browse contracts. Actually, let me go back one more. I'm gonna open this up in a new tab. And we're gonna browse contracts and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom here. And right now our smart wallets, uh, they are in beta here, but we're gonna deploy a simple factory, a uh, wallet factory. Um, you do have the options to also deploy dynamic and manage wallet factories. But for this use case, we just need a simple wallet factory. So we'll hit deploy now. Uh, we'll make sure we deploy it to the same chain. So the Mumbai chain here. We'll confirm that transaction and sign to add this to our dashboard. And there we go. We now have our account factory and this is what we're, our contract that we're gonna use to create our smart wallets. Now I'm gonna open up one more tab here. We're gonna go to the API keys here. For API keys, you are gonna need one in order to um, get started with our third web infrastructure services, which is gonna allow us to use the gasless functionality and everything. So we're gonna sign here and sign. And if you don't have an API key, you can just create a new one. Uh, I have a couple here, so I'll just be using one of these for our application. And with those things set, our ERC 1155 contract, our um, factory contract and our API key, we can now build our application. So I'm going to open up my terminal here and we're going to start by creating our application here and I'm going to run MPX uh, third web create app. Uh, actually, hold on, I'm running the later CLI here. We're going to do MPX uh, third web. I'm going to do uh, at latest create app just to make sure we get the latest version here. There we go. Uh, I'm going to name this uh, element and we're going to make it EVM because we're using the Mumbai testnet. I'm going to use next and TypeScript for this application. And once that's done, we'll change into our element project here. And now for this project, I'm going to use Chakra UI just to build the UI of our application a bit quicker and so that it looks a lot cleaner. Now you're free to use any UI library that you want or create your own styles. Uh, but for this one, I am just going to install Chakra um, and that's what I'll be using within this project. Okay, and then let's open this in our code editor. In our project here, first thing in our pages, we're gonna go to our underscore.attsx file. Uh, the 
active chain here, we're gonna switch this to Mumbai. And I'm also gonna make sure that I import Chakra here and make sure I wrap my components here with the Chakra provider. Now for our application, we're gonna, again, only support smart wallets. So in the third web provider here, we are going to add our supported wallets and we're gonna make sure that we support um, smart wallets. So in supported wallets, uh, we're gonna put smart wallet here. Oops. Now smart wallet, we do need to add a few things. And before we do that, uh, I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it constants here. And I'm gonna create a new file within that called addresses. And this is just going to hold uh, the addresses for uh, our NFT collection, um, our factory contract and our API keys. So let me do this here. Let me get our contract addresses. So let me get our NFT contract here, uh, which is this one. So I copy that. Let me get our factory address and let us get our API key. Copy that one. All right. So coming back to our underscore app.tsx here. So the first thing we're gonna need is our factory address and that is gonna be set to our factory address um, from our constants folder from our addresses file. Uh, the next thing we're gonna need is our third web API, which is going to be from our API key that we stored. Uh, we're also gonna set gas list and we're gonna set gas list to true and we're gonna have personal wallets. So this is the EOA wallets that we're going to allow within our application. Now we're gonna allow people to use MetaMask if they have MetaMask, uh, but we're also going to, oops. We're also gonna allow a local wallet, which will create a wallet for the user if they want to, and if they don't wanna connect their own. So we'll have a local wallet there, right? And then what we'll do after that is in our index.tsx file, we have some templated code here. Uh, we're just gonna remove all of this here. And I'm gonna create a container with chakra here and set the max uh, width to, uh, I'm just gonna put 1200 pixels and that will be our container there. I'm gonna get rid of a few things that we don't need anymore here. And if we come here and we go yarn dev and we run that, we'll be able to take a look at our application here. And it looks like it's working. Nothing is on our screen because we haven't added anything yet. So if we take a look at our app here, our demo one, uh, we're gonna create this little nav bar here that allows us to view our profile, sign out, sign in with a wallet connect button and it'll show like NFT collection or whatever title we choose to do so here. So coming back to our code editor here, let me just close this. Um, in our files here, I'm just gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this one components. And within that, I'm gonna create a new file and we're gonna call this navbar.tsx. And in our navbar here, uh, I'm just gonna import a few things, a few UI things from Chakra. We're gonna add a connect wallet. Uh, we're going to also get the address of our connected wallet with use address. Uh, we have use disconnect, which we'll use for our sign out button. And we have some styles and we're gonna, of course, be linking from our little profile icon to our profile page, right? And then in our nav bar here, again, we're going to get the address of the connected wallet. We're gonna make sure a wallet is connected. Um, and if one is connected, we'll prompt the profile icon. If not, then of course we have the sign in button. And we're going to also use, use disconnect. This will be what we use to disconnect our wallet or sign out and disconnect our wallet from our application. And then for our nav bar here, we're going to create a container with the same max width of 1200 pixels. We're gonna add some padding to the top and bottom just to give it some spacing. Then we're gonna create a flex here. We're going to justify the content um, with space between so that we have our title on our left and our button on the right. And we're gonna align everything in the center. Uh, so we're gonna add our title here, which is gonna be just NFT collection. Uh, then we're gonna check if 
uh, we have an address. So if we have an address, it means a wallet is connected. And if we don't, of course, that means we don't have one. So if we don't have an address, we're gonna put a connect wallet button here. Uh, we added some class styling to make it a blue button. Uh, we changed the button title to sign in instead of connect wallet. And we're gonna change the theme to light so that it shows up with a white background in the modal. Now, if there is an address, we're going to create a little menu here with Chakra. And the menu is going to have a button, which is going to be an avatar, which we're just getting some random picture of an avatar here. Then we have the menu list below it. And again, this is going to be the profile. So if I come back here to our application demo, uh, let me sign in. So this is going to be the profile and the sign out button. So profile will link us to our profile page that we're gonna create and sign out will allow us to disconnect. So coming here uh, in our menu list, first we'll set up our profile, which is gonna be a menu item. And again, it's going to link uh, to our profile page, which is going to be our page with our wallet address. Um, we'll create that later on in this tutorial. And the second and last item will be a sign out button, which is going to on click run our disconnect, which we put up here with our address. And then that creates our nav bar. And then we'll go to our underscore app.tsx file here. And above our component, we'll just put in our nav bar here. That way it just it shows up on all our pages. We'll come back and there we have it. We are in our application uh, we have our sign in button actually i didn't add the the style to make it blue but you can see here that it says sign in so if we click on that we have our smart wallet uh, we can click on that connect with our metamask as a, our personal wallet or continue as guest i can continue as guest with my local wallet and that signs me in and i can either sign out go to my profile which we don't have yet but if i hit sign out it should sign us out with and then bring us back to the sign in option. Now that we have that set, let us work on our home page here. So, first thing we're gonna do is get our contract. So, we're gonna use the use contract hook from Third Web and pass our NFT address. And then we're gonna also get the metadata from our contract. So, we're gonna use the use metadata on our contract that we just got. And we're gonna store the collection image, which we're gonna get from the metadata and the collection name. Now down here, so on our home page, we're gonna double check and make sure that we have our metadata loaded. If we are still loading the metadata, so up here when we use the use metadata hook, we can check if it is still loading. And if it is still loading, we're just going to display a loading spinner here. And once it has loaded, we'll then display a box here and the background image is going to be our collection image that we got from our contract metadata. We're gonna create the height here, which is gonna be 75% of the view height. We'll add some padding and some border radius. And within that box, we'll add the a heading, which is gonna display the collection name. So coming back to our application here, we can see that we have this nice big card um, and it's gonna display the image that we set as our meta, as our contract image and we have our contract name right over there now actually if we come back here the next thing we're going to do is create these uh nft cards here that display each one of the elements that we created and they're going to have a claim button so when someone is signed in they'll be able to claim the nft and if they're not it's going to advise them and point them to sign in in order to claim one of these elements so we'll first create a card component for those elements so come in here in our components, we'll create a new file. I will call this NFT card, and then we'll do .tsx. And in here, we're gonna import a few things from Chakra UI, but we're gonna be using a Web3 button from Third Web. We're gonna be using the use address hook to check if a wallet is connected. We'll also use the use contract uh, to get our contract and use NFT hook, which is gonna get us the metadata of an NFT that we specify. We'll then create uh, our props and our card here. So for our props, we're getting a token ID that we're gonna pass. So we're just gonna pass which token ID we wanna display. So that'll be a string there. And then for our NFT card here, we are going to, again, get the address using the use address hook. So this will get us the wallet address as well as check if a wallet is connected to our application. 
Uh, we'll then get the contract using our use contract hook. And then we'll get a uh, use uh, we'll use use NFT, uh, which will get us the NFT metadata from our contract. And then we'll pass the token ID that we pass through here through our props. And that is the information we'll display in our card. And for our card, we're going to create a box uh, similar to we did with our hero section. Uh, we're going to create a box with a background that is going to be set to the image uh, that we get from our metadata of our NFT that we pass through. Uh, we're going to set the background size to cover. We're going to make the height take up 50% of the view height. We'll add some border radius and some padding. Uh, now within the box, we're going to make a flex here and we're just going to make sure that it spans and spaces things out uh, within our box. We'll add a title, which is going to be the name of the NFT. And now we'll also check if a wallet is connected. Now, if there is no wallet connected, we are going to just add some text saying that they have to sign in in order to claim an element. And if there is a wallet connected, we can then display a Web3 button that is going to take uh, our contract address for our collection, uh, which is our NFT address. And the action that we're going to call on that contract is we are going to specify that to ERC 1155. We're going to use the claim function and we're going to claim the token ID of whichever NFT card they are clicking this on. So from that token ID that we're going to pass through and then we're just going to allow them to collect one and then that button will say claim element. So coming back to our index.tsx file here under our box here. We'll just create a simple grid uh, and this simple grid is a chakra UI component which will allow us to have two columns and we'll add some spacing in between those columns. Uh, we'll also make sure to import our NFT card here and we'll just pass through uh, our token ID so 0, 1, 2, and 3. And coming back to our app here we now have our fire element, water element, wind, and earth element here. And you can see it says sign in to claim element. So if we sign in here, uh, we now have our button that we can claim an element. Now we can actually claim an element here if we wanted to. Uh, we can select the fire element and claim. And again, because we are using smart wallet and we have gas list set to true, uh, this is all happening behind the scenes. It is claiming the NFT to our smart wallet and we don't have to confirm a transaction or pay gas on it. And we can double check this by coming back to our contract here. And you can see our fire element now shows a supply of one because we just claimed that one. Now let's come up to our app and we let's create our profile page because right now we don't have a profile page so it's not going to bring us to anything uh, but let's create that profile page that way we can view and transfer out the nfts that we collected so back in our code editor here under my files in pages we're going to create a new folder i'm going to call it profile and within that folder i'm going to create a new file uh, within brackets, uh, we're going to say address and .tsx. And in here, we're going to import a few things here. Uh, again, some UI components from Chakra. Uh, we're going to do a media renderer so we can get the NFT images. Uh, that's from Third Web. We'll also be using Web3 button, uh, use address, use contracts, and a new hook here that we didn't use yet, uh, which is use own NFTs, which is going to allow us to get what NFTs a wallet owns from a specific contract. So we'll create our profile page here. And first we'll set up our router and then we'll again get an address. We'll store the connected uh, wallet address into address here and we'll get the contract uh, from our NFT collection. We'll then use the used own NFTs. Uh, we're going to specify the contract. So we're checking the contract for what NFTs are owned and we're checking the connected wallet address. So we're checking to see how much and what NFTs does that wallet address own from the contract. And we'll also set up a state here for our transfer address because a user can input uh, in an input field what wallet address they want to send the NFT to if they decide to transfer it out of our app. And we're going to use um, a toast here, which is just a UI component from Chakra. So we know when a NFT has been transferred out of our application. 
And then for our profile page here, we'll create a container with a max width of 1200 pixels. We'll add some margin on the top. Uh, we'll first just add a button uh, that will just say back and that will just route us back to our homepage uh, once we click that button. We'll then add a heading that says this is our profile here. Uh, we'll then add a box uh, with some margin on the top just to separate it from our heading. And we'll add a little title here that says my elements. And then below that, we'll display the elements or the NFTs that is owned by the account. So we're going to display it in a grid. So we'll create a simple grid here and set the columns to four. Uh, that way we can have four NFTs going across as some spacing and some margin between them. Now we're going to check to see if the user has some NFTs. Uh, so once their information of the owned NFTs is no longer loading, uh, we'll take the owned NFTs and we'll map through them. And for each one, we're going to create a card here. And we'll first in that card display the image of the NFT. So we're going to use the media renderer here and we'll set the source to the NFT's metadata image, which is going to be the source of the image. And we'll set the height and width to 100%. Then we'll just add a flex here to space out some of the information. Um, the first one we're going to be displaying is the NFT's name. So we're going to get that from the NFT metadata.name. Uh, next to that, we're going to display the quantity and we're going to get the quantity by checking the NFT um, and then we can use the quantity owned uh, to property to get how much of that NFT is owned by the connected user. Uh, we'll then display a little transfer to title and we'll create an input field here that is going to be the input field where a user can put in the wallet address they want to transfer their NFT to if they want to transfer it out of our application. We just have a placeholder here. Uh, we set the width to 90% um, made the margin auto so it's centered uh, and we're setting the value to our transfer address which is the state that we set up up here and on change uh, we're just setting whatever is inputted into that field to the transfer address now if there is no transfer address uh, in our input here, we're not going to display the transfer button uh, but there is, if there is a wallet address inputted into our input field here what we'll do is create a little box here so we can center our button and we'll create a web3 button that will allow our user to transfer their nft so the contract address this is going to be interacting with is our nft contract and for our contract under erc 1155 we can call the transfer function here and we need to specify the address we're transferring it to, which will be the transfer address within our input field. Uh, we have the NFT, the NFT that we are transferring. So we can get that by getting the metadata and the ID of the NFT and the quantity that we're transferring. Right now in the app, we'll just allow them to transfer out one NFT. Now on submit, we're going to clear out uh, our address field so that uh, once they click on it, the field empties and the button will disappear. And if the transfer is successful, we'll pop up a little toast UI component from Chakra here. We'll say transfer is completed. Um, say that your element has been transferred. Uh, we'll set the status to success so that it will show us a little green toast. And we can, of course, close that out. And our transfer button is going to just say transfer. So coming back to our app here, once we sign in, I can come up here, go to my profile. It should show us our fire element, uh, which we do have our one fire element right over here. And if I come here, copy my MetaMask address, I can paste that in. Uh, we get the transfer button. If I click on that, the transfer is going through. And once that transfer has gone through, we should no longer have our fire element here and we should have a little Model here that says our transfer was complete. We can go back uh, and if we want to, we can claim a water element um, and then we can claim a couple other elements and see them displayed within our profile. So actually, let's claim one of each element here. And if we come back to our profile here, we should have one of each element here. 
You can see it displays nicely in our grid and we can transfer them out if we choose to do so. And there you go. We created a NFT collection and we built an application that allows a user to connect a smart wallet or an ERC4337 compatible wallet and allows them to interact with our web app and our NFT collection without having to one pay gas or sign any transactions. And that's the power of using smart wallet and being able to give an experience within an application with without having to deal with wallets. Now we do still give the opportunity and the ability for a user to transfer out their NFTs to their own non-custodial wallet, whether it be a MetaMask, Coinbase wallet, or any other wallet supported by like Wallet Connect. So you still have that functionality of giving and transferring an NFT to your own wallet. But I hope you folks enjoyed this video. I hope it gave a better idea of how you can implement smart wallet, local wallet, and how you can build a great Web3 experience for your Web3 app. Application. If you folks did find this video helpful and you found some value in it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on a notification bell so you don't miss out on videos just like this. If you haven't joined our Discord community yet and join the amazing community of builders just like yourself, if you have any questions or you need any support, you can drop it in our Discord and we'll be happy to help you out. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video and until next time, see ya.